Before we begin this video, I'd like to give a shout out to three new subscribers. Joanne Gordon, Joseph Gosser, and Drew Mascon. Welcome to the channel, and thank you for becoming our newest downloaders. We're actually getting close to our subscriber goal of 100 subscribers, which I will remind you is a homebrew tutorial of how to create a boss monster. Actually, I might change that a little bit. Might just do an entire series on homebrew for my subscriber special. Let me know down in the comments if you like that idea. Instead of just one homebrew, we go over the basis of homebrew as part of the 100 subscriber special. Anyway, on with the video. Greetings, my dear viewers. It is I, Drehon, and welcome back to another Dungeons & Dragons character conversion. Today we are finishing off the Generation 1 Starter Pokemon Trio with the Grass Poison type Bulbasaur. The, in my honest opinion, and probably statistically speaking, the easy mode of the Generation 1 games. Brock's Rock types are part ground, so they will easily be cut down by Bulbasaur. Misty's water types are also weak to grass types, so they're going to be taken down very easily. Lieutenant Surge's electric types, eh, not as much, but there are the half steel type Magnemites, and, well, technically. You should already have a good type advantage against the Magnemites at this point, since you did go through Mount Moon, and you probably had a Mankey in addition to your Bulbasaur when you fought Brock. So, you should have a Primate at this point, if I understand it correctly. Anyway, not important, we're talking about Bulbasaur. The Bulbasaur line in general. And with Venusaur stats, it's actually very easy to get stats of our own. Hit points and speed are the lowest of the stats. So it should go without saying that speed is going to be a dexterity of 10. For our attack and defense, they're roughly the same. So strength and con will be out of 12. The special attack and special defense stats are our highest stats. So charisma, wisdom are going to be 14, and currently intelligence is at an 11. According to Bulbapedia, Bulbasaur is an amphibian Pokemon. And we all know that Bulbapedia is never wrong when it comes to the information about Pokemon. Never. Absolutely never wrong about the information about the Pokemon franchise. So, anyway, we're going to be using Grung for our race, since it's the most amphibian po the most amphibian player race that we can pick from, other than Lokatha, which is a fish. So, yeah, we're going with Grung. Also, the second reason why we're going with Grung is for the poisonous skin feature, giving us our poison factor for this grass poison Pokemon. Increase your Charisma by 2, making it a 16, and your Intelligence by 1, making it a round 12. Now let's go ahead and talk about the Bulb on Bulbasaur's back. We're going to need the Dark Gift, known as Symbiotic Being. This will give us a symbiotic nature. We're going with a plant growth that replaces a portion of your body. We also get Intertwined Existence, Symbiotic, symbi 
sustained symbiosis, which lets us live a little bit longer because our symbiotic being does not want us to die. Because, well, the symbiote, it needs us to live in order for it to live. The symbiotic agenda, I uh, couldn't think of a good one, but symbiotic agenda number five or six on the agenda table will be close enough. To find the dark gift of symbiotic being, go to Von Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Now we're going to go ahead and go on to our background, and we are going to pick the Gladiator for our background, much like we did for the last two starter Pokemon. Daddy! Gotcha! We are actually going to be going off of Bulbasaur's Dex entries for Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald for our background. To quote, The flower's aroma soothes the emotions of people. So we're going to go ahead and go with the background of Fae Lost, found in... Dang it, I forgot the name of the book. I've been doing a lot of videos on that book. The Feywild Adventure. Ah, uh, foot. Foot, foot, foot. Anyway, in that book, we get this background, which gives us proficiencies in the following. Deception and survival. For skills, our tool is going to be a flute, as in grass flute, grass whistle, yeah, that's a move that Bulbasaur can get from breeding, so it doesn't entirely matter here. It was just a light reference. For languages, go with Sylvan. You'll get the Fey Mark. You have a sweet scent, like that of nectar or honey. That is the closest we can get to that Pokédex entry. We get Fey Wild Visitor as a feature, and the Fey Wild Connection feature as well. Moving on to class. Everybody who is anybody will probably have guessed Druid for our main class for Bulbasaur. Heck, I wanted to use Druid as the main class because there was nothing else that would fit. But I did find a class that, or at least a subclass, that would work perfectly for Bulbasaur. But I am going to go over Druid first, just so you all know what features to grab and what will be grabbed from using Druid. So, we get a hit die of 1d8 for each level of Druid, which is going to be 16. We get a starting hit point of 8 plus our constitution modifier, which is only 9 hit points, which is fine. We're kind of low on the HP departments anyway. For your proficiencies, for skills, grab nature and medicine. You get spell casting based off of your wisdom modifier. For your druid circle, grab circle of the spore. You'll get the circle spells of Chill Touch, Blindness and Deafness, Gentle Repose, Animate Dead, Gaseous Form, Blight, Confusion, Cloud Kill, and Contagion. You'll get the Halo of Spores feature, Symbiotic Entity, Fungal Infestation, Spreading Spores, and Fungal Body. Circle of the Spores is to represent two moves that Bulbasaur is able to get. Technically three, but they've since removed Stun Spore for whatever reason. So it's just going to be referencing Poison Powder and Sleep Powder, which we are going to be referencing in the spell list at the end of this video. Both the Druid spell list and the spell list of the main class of this build that I am going to be using. So, 
without further ado, let's get into the main build. Oh, one more thing I forgot is feet. Scrub Meta Magic Adept Transmuted Spell Poison or Acid and Distant Spell. Also grab the feat Resilience and use Charisma. At level 20, you should have the following stats. Strength of 12, Dexterity of 10, Constitution of 14, Intelligence 12, Wisdom is 20, and Charisma is 17. That is if you're using Druid as your main class. Now, for the main build. Because Bulbasaur is given this plant, the symbiotic entity at birth. The powers he is able to use, they are able to use at birth. We are going with Sorcerer. More specifically, we're going with a Sorcerer's origin found in Cobalt Press's material, Spore Sorcery. This still gives us the reference we wanted for Bulbasaur, Stun Spore, Poison Powder, and Sleep Powder, as well as other instances where Bulbasaur will need something similar. Spore Sorcery is what we will be using. We get features known as Nature Magic, which allows us to use druid spells in addition to our sorcerer spells. This sorceress origin is the druid equivalent of the divine soul sorcerer. But instead of cleric spells, we get druid spells, just like, like, like I just said. We also get spore transmission, which is actually a pretty decent feature. If you would like to learn more about the spore sorcerer, there is a wiki page that goes over each of the subclasses from Cobalt Press, but I would recommend getting some of the material yourself. That way you have it in full. The Spore Sorcerer, if I remember correctly, was actually released in Deep Magic, but I believe the Hero's Handbook also has everything they've ever released for their subclasses. So I'd recommend grabbing that. And supposedly the Tome of Heroes will be released shortly. I don't know exactly when it's supposed to be released, but it is getting close to being released. So that might have an updated version of the Heroes Handbook, and therefore will have an updated version of the Spore Sorcery Sorceress Origin. Now enough blabbering, let's go ahead and get into how we get our Pokeball. Much like Squirtle and Charmander, we are going to need the Genie Warlock as our multi-class. We're actually going to go with the Deo for the specific Genie that we want to have a patron with. This will give us Bottled Resprite and Genie's Wrath, which the extra damage we get from it is going to be bludgeoning damage. This was really the only uh, Genie that would fit some of the moves that we get from Bulbasaur's uh, move list. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of similar. Also, plants grow in the dirt. It's very loose. I just went with it because it was a better pick than the Jin, and it was more accurate than an Efriti or a Merid. Spellcasting modifier is going to be with Charisma, just like it was with the Sorcerer. Level 2 Sorcerers get a Fount of Magic, so we now have our Sorcery Points, which we can use to get more Spell Slots. Warlock Level 2 gets Eldritch Invocations, Grab, Beast Speech, and Fiendish Vigor. This will let us live a little bit longer. Sort of a Absorb or uh, Root... I think it's Growth? Ingrain. I think it was ingrain. 
the move ingrain was very similar to this. Moving on to level 3 sorcerer, we'll get our meta magic, which will be transmuted spell and distance spell. For your transmuted spell, you are most likely going to change your spell to deal poison or acid damage. For level 4 sorcerer, go ahead and increase your charisma by 2, making it an 18. Level 5, we're finally in the Ivysaur stage. Level 5 Sorcerers will give us the Nature Magic Improvement from our Spore Sorcery subclass. This gives us the ability to speak with plants. That's the spell we get from this ability. We now have an automatic usage of speak with plants. Like I said, this was a very good subclass, and like I said, I almost went with Druid. But after finding this subclass, I knew I had to use it. Moving on to level 6 Sorcerer, we get Meta Magic Spore Transmission, which increases our Meta Magic usage depending on what Meta Magics we have. And there are some Meta Magic options within Cobalt Press that are also listed on getting a boost from Spore Transmission. Again, I recommend reading the Cobalt Press material to get yourself familiarized with their material. Because they improve on the Dungeons & Dragons formula so much. Not only with their monsters from the Creature Codex and Tome of Beasts, but also with their player guides. I highly recommend you read these Dungeon Masters. Moving on to level 8 Sorcerer, we're going to go ahead and grab the feat known as Resilient, giving us an increase in our intelligence. So it'll be a 13 at this point. We now have a proficiency in intelligence saving throws, which is what we are after. Remember that special defense. For level 10 sorcerers, we'll go ahead and get another metamagic option. Go with Heighten Spell. Level 12 sorcerer, we'll grab another feat. We're going to grab Resilient in Wisdom, which will increase to 15. And now we have proficiency in Wisdom saving throws. Finally, we are at Venusaur at sorcerer level 14 with Spores Protection. This is actually a very good feature, too. I just don't exactly remember what it was. I think it gave us some temporary hit points, which, again, it's very good, especially for Venusaur. Level 16 Sorcerer gets another ability score improvement. Go ahead and round off Intelligence and Wisdom. Intelligence is now a 14, Wisdom at a 16. Warlock level 3 gets a Pact Boon, Pact of the Talisman. This is our Venusaur Rite. So we have our Mega Venusaur. And level 14, go ahead and increase your constitution by 2 points, making it a 14. And that is it for the main portion of this build. Let's go ahead and take a look at the spell lists. If you went with Druid as your main class, here are the spells that you will need to grab as per the recommended spell list that I am providing for you. Cantrips, Druid Craft, Gust, Poison Spray, Thorn Whip, First Level, Earth Tremor, Entangle, Cure Wounds, Good Berry, Purify Food and Drink, and Charm Person. Second level, Bark Skin, Earth Bind, Enhance Ability, Spike Growth. Third level, Daylight, this is our sunny day. Plant Growth, Protection from Energy. Fourth level, Charm Monster, both Charm Person and Charm Monster represent the move Charm, which the Bulbasaur line is able to learn via TM. Grasping Vine. Grasping Vine and the Thorn Whip 
are very reminiscent of the Move Vine Whip. Guardian of Nature. Fifth level, Commune with Nature and Wrath of Nature. Sixth level, we're getting our Solar Beam equivalent, Sunbeam. We're also getting Mirage Arcane. This will represent our Grassy Terrain spell. We also get the 8th level spell of Earthquake, because one of the moves we can learn is, of course, Earthquake. If you do not pick Druid, we do have our Sorcerer and our Warlock spell list available for you as well. For our Warlock spells, we're going to start with them to finish off the alternative build. Warlock, Toll the Dead, True Strike, and Blade Ward for our cantrips. First level spells, Detect Evil and Good, Sanctuary, and Hex. Second level spells, Crown of Madness, and Enthrall, going off of the Charm move again. For your Sorcerer spells, there's going to be a lot of similarities to the Druid spell list, because of the Spore Sorcerer's ability to use Druid spells. Like I said, it is the Druid version of the Divine Soul Sorcerer. Cantrips. Druid, cla blah, 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 blah. Druid Craft. Gust. Poison Spray. Thorn Whip. Earth Tremor. Entangle. Cure Wounds. Sleep for our Sleep Powder. Shield and Charm Person. Shield is reminiscent of Protect. Second level, Mirror Image. This is reminiscent of the Substitute move. Earthbind, Enlarge, Reduce. This will allow us to gain our Gigantamax form. Plant Growth. Third level, Druid Craft. Plant Growth. I just misspoke, and that's supposed to be Spike Growth on second level. Plant Growth for 3rd level and Fireball. You'll use transmute, Transmuted Spell to make this more of a Poison Bomb, like Sludge Bomb, or... What was that other one? Uh... Why are our names escaping me today? Anyway, Sludge Bomb is going to be the next equivalent... Fourth level spells, Vitrolic Sphere, Grasping Vine, Guardian of Nature. Fifth level, Commune with Nature and Wrath of Nature. Sixth level, Sunbeam. Ninth level, Mirage Arcane. And seventh level is Mirage Arcane. Eighth level is Earthquake. I do hope you enjoyed this build, my dear viewers. And a great thank you to our subscribers once again. We're getting us up to 92 subscribers. I probably should be getting ready for the 100 subscriber special here soon if we're getting subscribers as fast as we did. Three subscribers in the span of just a few days. I think that's a record. Anyway, until next time, my dear viewers, this has been Drehan, and I... I'm offline.